In this video, we're getting started with OpenGL. The first thing I'll need is the ability to create GPU programs and then run them with some input data and finally get output on the screen from the program. So that's the goal for today. As I go, I'll be pointing out relevant APIs so you know where to go looking to do similar work. But what I won't be doing is teaching the specifics of OpenGL or GLSL, the OpenGL shading language. I'm gonna skip over those details and just focus on the high level outline of how I build an OpenGL system from the ground up. With that, let's get into it. First, I set up an OpenGL Scratch program so I can get some of the OpenGL basics done in isolation. Later, I'll transport the OpenGL code into the code base when all of this OpenGL code is ready. While I'm setting up the Scratch base, I'm also going to get started pulling in definitions for a lot of functions, types, and constants from the OpenGL reference header that I've got. We'll need a lot of these throughout the arc, so you'll see me doing that here and there, and I won't stop to comment on it every time. This mostly just involves putting in new functions into my function xlist header and grabbing some type defs and some defines for the types and constants from the headers and putting them into my header. With the Scratch program ready to go, the next task is to set up a GPU program. First, I need to create a shader with GL create shader. At first, this call is failing for me, and so I go and do some debugging. And it turns out that since I'm doing this work outside of my main loop, I don't have a window selected for rendering, which means the thread doesn't have a current OpenGL context. And OpenGL APIs only work when you have a current OpenGL context. So I fix this by putting in an inline call right here to select an OpenGL context and later release it. And once I put the code inside of that range, uh, GL create shader starts actually working. Next, I need to set the shader source with the function gl shader source. I'm just using plain C style strings to write my shaders here. Uh, some people will prefer to go and do extra work like creating a system with separate files for their GLSL or using fancier string literals that make the GLSL code look more like code instead of like strings. That stuff is a bit of extra work, and I'm going to be writing very simple GLSL code for a while, possibly for the entire length of this code base. I'm certainly not going to be using it for any of these 2D tool features uh, in such a way that it would matter that I switch to a more easy to read format. I'm going to be writing 5, 10, 20, maybe 30 lines of GLSL code per shader. So plain C string literals are nice and simple, nice and easy, and that's the way I'm going to go. Once I've set the source of the shader, I have to compile it with GL compile shader. Then I want to immediately start checking for compilation errors. When I can see the compilation errors, it helps a lot with iterating quickly on my GLSL code. So the earlier I'm able to do that, the better. I can get compilation status and errors with the calls GL get shader IV and GL get shader info log. If the shader does fail to compile, I can also clean it up with GL delete program. Next, I'm going to have to do all of that again because I actually need two shaders to create a GPU program. I need a vertex shader and a fragment shader. And so far, I just have set up a vertex shader. But all of the code for doing a vertex shader is also the exact same code I need for a fragment shader. So instead of duplicating it, I'm going to pull all of that out and make a pr procedure that just is my create for shader procedure. And I'm going to massage the details on that procedure to make it a nice and practical procedure that I can use in the future without getting confused, and without any maintenance headaches and stuff like that. With the create shader procedure written, I'm able to easily create my two shaders. Now I need to combine them into a GPU program and link them together. I can do all of that with GL create program, GL attach shader, and GL link program. Again, I want to immediately check for errors, which I get back from that linking. So I use the functions glgetprogramiv and glgetprograminfolog. It's a little bit annoying, but it's a separate code path. They use separate functions, even though it's kind of the same concept. So you have to call, write it again. We're getting errors just like before, though, so that I can see when something goes wrong with the linking. And a lot of times with shaders, the useful errors come through in either one of these stages. So I don't skip either one. If the program didn't link successfully, then I can also clean it up just like with the shaders by calling GL delete program. Now I can technically create a GPU program, but to make it useful, I need to write shaders that will actually do something. For starters, my goal is to just get a white shape to show up on the screen to test out that my program and the input data are doing what I expect. Thank you. 
Once I've written my test GPU program, I need to call GLUs program to select it and then GL draw arrays to actually run it. In order to run the GPU program, I also need to provide data to it, which means it's time to set up a vertex buffer. First, I need to call GL gen buffers to allocate a buffer ID, and then I call GL bind buffer to make it the selected vertex buffer. But for that to work, I also need to set up a vertex array object with GL gen vertex arrays and GL bind vertex array. Once my vertex buffer is set up, I can handwrite some vertex data and send it to the buffer with the call GL buffer data. Then I finally have to tell the GPU program how it needs to find vertex attributes inside the buffer. And the, I do that with the calls GL enable vertex attrib array and GL vertex attrib pointer. Okay, so that's all the basics. Before I wrap it up here, I want to do one slightly more advanced feature and that's instancing. I only have to do a few things to start instancing from what I've already got. First, I need to call GL vertex attribute divisor on each attribute when I'm setting up my vertex attribute information before the GL draw arrays. And then I need to switch from GL draw arrays to GL draw arrays instanced, which tells it that I'm using instancing. And then I need to change the vertex data a little bit because I set it up before to have just one vertex attribute. Now I need a shader with two vertex attributes. One of them can be instanced and the other one, the non-instanced uh, vertex attribute. And I need to modify the data I am sending to the vertex buffer to have data for separate instances too. And then finally, with all of that done, I can make the new draw call and see the change. It does take me a little while to get this part working because I make a bunch of little mistakes in setting up the new attributes. There's a lot of calls to be made with just integers and stuff. This is stuff you could automate, but the process of automating it would be a long drawn out project of its own and you'd first have to understand all the details of how this works anyways. So getting these numbers right right now is just an annoying part of the job dealing with the OpenGL API and so on. Once I have fixed all that up, we can see I get multiple rectangles coming up on the screen that are positioned by vertex data that's just giving the top left and bottom right corners, which is something I can only do because I'm using instancing. With that, we have the GPU programs and the ability to run them with some arbitrary data all up and running. It's a pretty good start, but we have a lot more work to do. Next time, I'm going to get into making these rectangles look a little nicer. So see you then.